Hey folks, Fernando doing another video for more survivalists. Stay for this video, I'm gonna be going through one of these basic concepts of survivalism, preparedness, which is how long can you go without having water? We all understand it's important, it's one of those essentials for life, but how long can you actually go without water? Now, I've done videos about this regarding food, and it's quite interesting, you can go for a very long period of time. If you haven't seen this video, it's basically, you know, can go about a month, month and a half, two months without food. Surprisingly, a lot of people think that wouldn't be realistic. It actually is. For most people, yeah, you can go for several weeks without food. Now, regarding water, it's a little bit more complex because the way in which you lose water is a lot faster than the way in which you burn calories. And one of my previous videos was about this water bottle specifically. It is an IKEA water bottle, a half a liter. And someone in, in the comments said, oh, you have no idea what you're talking about that wouldn't be good enough for anything you need a lot more water you need at least uh, three liters of water per day so as to survive well no that's actually the kind of water you need in average it's gonna be two three liters of water so as to um, you know be fully completely hydrated but it's not that you're not you're gonna be dying if you don't get three liters of water per day as I measure this is half a liter so it's 16 ounces for you guys in US it's gonna be 32 ounces ounces per liter so yeah so yeah just so, so keep in mind one liter it's gonna be 32 ounces of water okay so keep that in mind as I go through the video so yeah uh, you have your average you know, person human being here this is gonna be about 60 to 70 percent water you know, that's what you're basically made of. Now, you lose water throughout the day because of loss through, you know, perspiration and your breathing and exhaling water. Of course, urine and fecal matter, that's mostly, you know, when you're there's a lot of transpiration involved when you're exercising you can lose up to two three liters of water it could be up to uh, two or three liters per hour lost uh, as you keep on sweating and losing uh, water in hot uh, climatic conditions and uh, as you you exercise in that in that kind of environment now the two or three wa uh, liters of water, these may be lost during your day or in an hour, depending on the exercise that you're doing and how hot it is. So there's no fixed number, no fixed rate. But in general, you could say that two or three liters of water is what the average human ends up needing per day so as to recover the uh, water lost um, you know, throughout the day. Now, in terms of, okay, yeah, but what happens uh, when, when I don't get water? How much can I actually go? How much can I actually last? And if you go by the rule of three, which says, you know, three minutes without air, three days without water, is it? It's not really a bad, num a bad uh, number. In 19... 44 a couple of scientists tried this out uh, and they were not uh, taking any water at all but they were eating food even though they were sticking to dry food they lasted for three days now three days before they died no three days before they felt that their you know face was pale and their uh, throat was um, a difficult to swallow so after three days these two scientists said okay let's stop this that's the limit that we find uh, we, we have here so three days without water now if you look at how much um, degradation you suffer as you keep on dehydrating you basically have four stages of dehydration until you actually end up in death because of lack of water the first stage involves the loss of two percent of your body in water in, in, in water you know two percent of your body mass lost in water here you're talking about um, uh, your, your kidneys no longer uh, sending the same amount of water to your bladder. You're going to be looking at, uh, uh, you, start, you start to sweat less. The uh, urine gets a lot darker and your body temperature starts going up. Your blood also thickens because, you know, there's simply less water in it. It's not, you know, the, the same amount of water. The less water your blood has, the thicker it gets and the harder your heart has to work so as to keep that pumping through your body. In the second stage of dehydration, you're going to be losing about 4% 
of your uh, body mass in water. And here is where you have a significant drop of blood pressure, okay, because again, less you know, water in the system, less water in your blood, the pressure drops a lot, and you may end up fainting because of dehydration. Number three, third stage, you're looking here at about seven, eight percent loss of, uh, of your body weight in water. Here, you're looking at organ failure. And here is where things start getting, you know, pretty dangerous for you. Now, this is not set in stone. And I actually have it written here, 1984. During the 1984 Olympic marathon, Alberto Salazar lost 8% of his body mass and water during that marathon. Now, he didn't suffer the kind of organ failure you would traditionally uh, end up suffering, mostly because he rehydrated quickly. So this is one of the interesting regarding water, unlike with food, you're able to lose a lot of water very fast, but you can replenish that right away very quickly. This is why you often see some, and not, it's not just about athletes losing a lot of water during some of the, this very intense physical activity. You see uh, boxers, MMA fighters, when they want to drop weight because they have to you know, go on a scale and they need a certain number, they simply dehydrate. And you actually see them very often. If you follow boxing at, at any level, you often see them that right after they weigh in, they have the bottle of water right next to them. They just step out, down of, out of the scale and they immediately start drinking water so to rehydrate. Immediately so. So you can replenish that and go back somewhere to you know, your healthy levels. It's not just athletes, even with you know, Henry Cavill, the, the Superman guy, actor, uh, he was also in the Witcher series. And there's a famous scene in the Witcher where he's like in a, in a, in a bathtub and he's looking like super fit and ripped. Um, in the interview that there's a clip of in YouTube, uh, Henry Cavill says, you know, man, I was dying in that scene. I was completely dehydrated and I was just begging for a drop of water during that scene. So he looks super ripped because all of the fat, keep in mind, most of the fat in your body, most of that is water. So if you take away that water, you reduce all of that up to the basic, you know, bare minimum, and your skin is gonna be going tight against your, your muscles, especially in a fit person already. So a fit person that is very dehydrated, he's gonna be looking super ripped. Keep that in mind when you see some of these movies where, yes, of course, there's a lot of CGI involved, but they, but they realize also that dehydrating the actor to these levels, man, you're gonna be looking completely different if you do that. Now, if this goes on and you, you reach the final stage, you're going to be looking at, yes, your organs start failing when you lose 7, 8% of your, uh, of your weight in, in water. Uh, when you lose about 10, 20%, that's usually convulsions followed by, yeah, death. Okay, so you really don't want to end up losing 10% of, of your body weight in water. Your heart may end up failing. Even when you're in this level, uh, your, your body will start sacrificing the non-vital organs so as to keep you alive a little bit longer. But again, keep in mind, here is where you probably already start looking at the delirium. You're not thinking straight. You're basically desperate because you're literally dying for a, a glass of water. So, when, when you look at these things, um, so as to try to put things into context of, of survival and preparedness, how much water do I need? Uh, man, you're going to be needing those two, three liters of water per day for full hydration. Now, if you don't have access to water, a little bit of water can go a long way if you're smart about it. That's why in the, in the video about the, the water bottle, someone was, oh, you have no idea what you're talking about. You die if you don't have three liters of water per day. No, you don't die immediately if you don't have three liters of water per day. You can go actually for several days, keeping in mind that 
you know, and it's going to be depending on the situation in which you are in. If you are lost, stranded, and you have to walk, you know, X number of miles, 10 miles, and you don't have much water, well, you probably want to walk during the night and walk without, uh, you know, sweating too much. So you're going to be walking at a comfortable pace, not uh, breathing through your mouth a lot, because that's one of the ways in which you end up losing a lot of water. Um, it could be that you die of dehydration in just a matter of hours if you are lost in the desert. You start running, you start panicking, you start, you know, losing water very fast, your heart goes uh, a, a, a thousand miles and you, you're frying under the sun, maybe in a couple hours you faint, you drop, and soon after that you end up dying within a few hours in that extreme condition. You sweat about two, three liters of water per hour in those conditions. Desert, exercising, running a marathon, that's the kind of water you lose. You end up losing that during a marathon or you may end up losing that through throughout your day, depending or on the activity you're looking at. But let's say you're trapped somewhere and we actually have this account of, I'm going to be looking at the name, Andreas, an Austrian guy, Andreas um, Mihavec, whatever it is, in 1979. 18-year-old Andreas was thrown in, 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 in a cell, in a prison cell for whatever uh, whatever happened. He was just placed on, on a prison cell and they forgot about poor Andreas. And Andreas, until they realized that the guy was there, he is the Guinness world record of surviving without water. He survived for also 18 days. So that's the record of surviving without water. Now, Keep in mind, prison cell, it's going to be dark, he's uh, away from the, the, the sun, it's going to be probably a little bit cooler, and if you keep calm, you can survive. If you keep calm, don't move around much, try not sweating much, don't even open your mouth, stay as calm as you can, and that's going to be extending considerably how much you can survive without water. Folks, if you're interested in all this stuff, you have three survival skills. For the economic aspect, you have surviving the economic collapse and bugging out on relocating. My books available following the links below. Take care, see you on next video. Have a great day.